My name is Donald Lassier, and it's my honor and privilege to be president and CEO of the Muhammad Ali Center. And I want to welcome you all to the world famous Muhammad Ali Center. Um, yeah, let's. So I'm truly excited to be part of today's announcement about bringing championship boxing back to our great city of Louisville, Kentucky. It is awesome that we're going to be doing this um, in June during the I Am Ali Festival. It is a great tribute to the legacy of Muhammad Ali. And what is really great about this event is it will be at Freedom Hall, which was the first uh, time that Muhammad Ali fought as a professional boxer. He fought at Freedom Hall. So this is really a great tribute to his legacy. Um, as you all know, it's been almost a year since Muhammad passed. Um, and the city really came together to honor Muhammad in a way that I don't think um, I can articulate how great of a week it was in celebrating his life and legacy. The I Am Ali Festival is a continuation of that legacy. And again, I'd like to thank our elected officials, um, uh, top rank, our top notch boxing, the KEC team for bringing this event together. And there's two people I'd like to recognize and have them stand up because they were really responsible for making sure that this thing got put together in the right way. And that's Greg Fonte with the Sports Commission. Stand up, Greg. Take your round of applause, please. And then there's Jay Graham, our Chief Development Officer here at the Ali Center. Welcome home. So first and foremost, I'd like to again thank you for being here. And then now I'd like to introduce Joe Reeves. Joe. He is the founding partner of Louisville Top Notch Boxing and also one of the principal parties in putting this thing together. Joe. Well, this is awesome. Uh, two years ago, um, my partner, co-founder, uh, James Dixon, uh, head coach at Louisville TKO Boxing, and I got together and, and, and came up with a couple of goals. All right? The first goal was to create a, an inner city boxing gym, which allowed our youth to have a place to, to learn boxing, to work out, to learn discipline, uh, to empower them to be the best that they can be. And we, we've accomplished that. We're two years in the making. We serve over about 150 kids a week uh, at our gym, uh, 104 East Breckenridge. And it's all because of James Dixon. You're a great coach and a great leader and proud to be your partner. His heart for the youth is, is, is unbelievable. So we thank you for that. Um, the second goal we had was this, this crazy vision of bringing professional world-class boxing back to Louisville. And I have to be honest with you, I wasn't, I wasn't a big boxing fan. I love boxing, but I wasn't a, a, a student like James was. And he kind of gave me the background. And, and the reality of it was in this city and state, we didn't have everybody working together to do this. This was the home of the greatest. And today we weren't even on the map when it came to boxing. Well, that's going to change through the partnership, through the state doing their job, the city doing their job, the, the uh, arena boards doing their job, and the public sector supporting this, we have pulled this together. And it's very exciting, happy to be a part of it, and uh, look forward to just a great event. So thank you. Thanks, Joe. So next, I'd like to introduce Jason Rittenberry. He's president and CEO of the Kentucky Venues. Jason. Thanks, Donald. Again, honored to be here today, honored to be here to represent Kentucky Venues, the Kentucky Exhibition Center, and Freedom Hall. Uh, as Donald mentioned, uh, for many, many years, Freedom Hall has been the home of, of amateur, professional boxing, from men's to women's boxing, from first fights to last fights, Freedom Hall has long held its own in the sport of boxing. And as Donald also mentioned earlier, on a late night in October 1960, a young Cassius Clay made his professional debut at Freedom Hall right here in Louisville in a six round match. And then 44 years later, Layla Ali defeated Monica Nunez in that same arena. 
There have been many greats that have fought in Freedom Hall, from Muhammad Ali to Layla Ali, Jimmy Ellis, Mike Tyson, and Lamar Clark. have all made history in Freedom Hall and made Freedom Hall a heavyweight in the boxing world. And so thanks to the partnership with Evander, The Real Deal, TKO, James, Joe, all the groups here, uh, lots of folks that are going to get a lot of praise and a lot of thanks today for putting this together. Uh, I'm just excited to be a part of this, excited to represent Kentucky Venues, and we're excited to bring championship boxing level back to Freedom Hall where it belongs right here in Louisville. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. Next up, we're going to introduce Sal Musumichi. Did I get that right, Sal? All right. Come on up, Sal. He is the co-founder of Real Deal Sports and Entertainment. Hello, everybody. I'm very honored to be here. When Evander and I uh, put together this team just a few months ago, our first decision was, where do we go? Where's the right town to go to make this major impact for Evander's inaugural event? And there were many venues, many large casinos around the world that we could have chose. But we, we felt there was only one place to bring this, and that's the home of his inspiration, who was born here, Muhammad Ali, and Louisville. No other place is the place for this show. For no other reason, but we, we, we believe that Louisville is the place to bring back big time boxing. We feel that we're well received here. I must say that upon landing here less than 48 hours ago, I've never seen a team I've never seen such a team of such dedicated people right down the line. I mean, you've heard their names already, but I mean, from, from the governor, the mayor, Joe Reeves, Freedom Hall, the Sports Commission, the Athletic Commission. I've done 200 shows worldwide in 20 years. And I really mean it from my heart is that we're so well received here. And we're not just bringing you one show. We have a long-term plan to bring you championship boxing on a regular basis. And there's one more thing I'd like to add, not just we're going to bring you big time, televised live championship boxing, okay, and the four-time heavyweight champ of the world to Louisville to make that happen. We're also looking, Evander was scouting out some young talent, and we love what we saw at the TKO Boxing Gym. And today at 3 o'clock, we're going to be signing our first, whom I believe will be a world champion under our company, right from Louisville at the TKO Gym at 3 o'clock. Thank you. Thank you, Sal. Now it's my honor and privilege to introduce our great mayor, Mayor Greg Fisher. Good friend and neighbor, actually. All right, well, an exciting day here in our city. And I just want to say uh, how proud I am of a, of a few folks, but I want, to, I want to talk about the kids. I'm really proud of TKO and what Joe and James have done for the kids of our city. And I would encourage all the media to go by the gym someday. And you see these young guys that too often the media portrays in a negative way. You see them doing their homework before they can go into the gym. And you see them going into the gym and they work and they work and they work more and they get better. And James and Joe would not happen without you two guys making this. So you're elevating the whole city and I just want to say thank you very, very much for doing that. Good job. I'm, I'm going to give a little historical perspective on this, if you will. You know, we just ran the 143rd Kentucky Derby uh, on Saturday. So people say that's a long history of sport in our history. But there is one sp uh, sport that has a longer history in Louisville than the Kentucky Derby, and that is boxing. Boxing in Louisville goes all the way back to 1781, not long after the city was founded here next to this river. The first public boxing match that we know about happened right over at 7th and Main Street just three years after the city was founded in 1784. So we know a little bit something about boxing right here. In 1905, a boxer named Marvin Hart from Fern Creek beat Jack Johnson and went on to become the heavyweight champion. In the 1950s, obviously, boxing was really infused in the culture of the city. Wave TV carried a show called Tomorrow's Champions. And who was that produced by? none other than the Louisville police officer, the one and only Joe Martin. And Joe, of course, as we know, was the white police officer that the young African-American kid Cassius Clay went to when he was 14 years old 
after his red bicycle was stolen, and he said, I'm going to whoop whoever took that bicycle. And what did that policeman Joe Martin said to him? Well, son, you let her better learn how to box first. And then so Joe took him under his wing, and then, of course, thus was born Cassius Clay, Olympic gold medalist, just four or five years after that. An amazing turn of events. And I love the kind of the serendipity of the, the young kid from the street, young black kid from the street, the white police officer saying, we're all in this together, son. Let's achieve greatness together. And they did it. Not too much different than your story, Evander, than you told last night. And we love sports here in our city. We're obviously the home of the champ, the Louisville Lip, who would run around this city saying, I am the greatest. And what happens when most 14-year-olds run around the city and 15-year-olds saying, I am the greatest? People say, oh, who do you think you are? You're nobody, you, you know. But he believed in himself. And what I'd like to say, who are those other kids running around our city right now that are saying, I am the greatest? And people aren't giving them a shot. People aren't giving them a hand up. There's a lot of champions out there like that. Our job is to help these kids achieve their greatness and achieve their potential. And that's what this, part of what this announcement is all about here today, discovering those future champs that we have in our midst. So we have the champ. We've got the Louisville Slugger, the Louisville Cardinals, the Heisman Trophy winner. Lamar Jackson, obviously, is from Louisville as well. And now we get to host this big, big event coming up here as well. So that's what we do here in our city. Greg Fonte, you and Carl Schmidt at the, at the Sports Commission do a great job for us. We've got the ACC baseball championship coming up here in just a week or two. So sports is big business for our city. You put sporting together with urbanism. Uh, I got 24 million tourist visits just in this past year, and it's really growing very rapidly, and it's a great part of our economy as well. And you look around this city, you see all kind of momentum, $10 billion in capital constructions. A couple projects the governor and I have worked on together from the Omni Hotel, the expansion of the convention center. It means the world is coming to Louisville. And it's going to come to Louisville even more with this great boxing match that we got that you all put together, Sal. So we really, really appreciate this tremendous opportunity and look forward to doing great things with you guys. Congratulations, everybody. Thanks, Mayor Fisher. That was a great history lesson. So now it's uh, my distinct honor to introduce a four-time, or the four-time heavyweight champion of the world, co-founder co of Real Deal Sports and Entertainment, the champ, Evander Holyfield. Thank you. I'm, I'm honored to be here, and uh, I would like to say that the reason why we came here, it would just be fitting because the fact is, as a kid, I was told I could be like Muhammad Ali. And so, you know, in the point of being told that I could be like Muhammad Ali, I was eight years old. I knew he said he was the greatest. You know what, I wanted to be the greatest. But, you know, so they say, well, you know, he was a good fighter and all that. So, so as a kid, I, I come out, I okay then. I, I want to be like this, but I had to ask my mama. And, 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 the, and, the, and the coach said, what? I said, I got to ask my mama. And he said, son, do you know you got a good mama? And I was kind of looking at him, well, why would he think I have a good mama? He don't know my mama. But he knew that no, don't nobody go in anywhere without support. So I went and asked my mama. And she said, do you know what they're going to do to you? I said, no, ma'am. They're going to hit you. Well, I get three whoopings a day anyway. <laughs> I'm accustomed to getting hit, so you know what? But this is how it starts. So here I am. I'm here today. And, and, and so the whole purpose of being here, the purpose is giving someone else an opportunity. I, Evander Holyfield, became the heavyweight champion of the world in 1990. In 1990, I became the heavyweight champion of the world. Then I lost it. I became the heavyweight champion of the world again in 1993. I lost it. I became the heavyweight champion of the world again in 1996. I lost it, <laughs> and I became 2000. Now, in these three things, it was. My mama said, listen, follow the direction, don't quit. 
I didn't quit. I'm the only man to ever been the heavyweight champion four times. So I feel that being here, the being able to tell the kids the same thing. If you listen, if you follow direction and don't quit, you could be the heavyweight champion of the world too. But also, you could overcome these odds. Because I kind of thought it was bad to lose. I didn't want to lose. But because I have lost a lot of time, but I didn't stay down. I got up. So it's easy for me to influence kids because I say, you know, hey, I went perfect. I made a lot of mistakes, but I didn't quit. And I think that this is what it takes to make people successful. And I think this, I think these kids here have everything that's necessary. They got, they got nice coaches, they got parents, and you got a community that wants to see them grow. And so when you have all the, when you have all the elements, it's impossible not to be successful. Thank you very much. Okay, now it's my distinct honor and privilege, privilege to introduce our governor of the great state of Kentucky, Governor Matt Bevin. This is, uh, this is a tremendous treat for me personally. I love boxing. I've loved boxing since I was a kid. I've loved boxing since the first time you were a uh, heavyweight champ to the end. Uh, I grew up, one of the greatest thrills I ever had, I worked at an amusement park when I was a teenager. And it, this was in the mid-1980s. And uh, walking through the line to get on the ride for the, uh, for the uh, Cinderella's Magic Pumpkin Coach, which I was driving that day, was a guy, not this man, but a man who was then the middleweight heavyweight cha middleweight uh, world champion at the time, a guy named Marvelous Marvin Hagler. Humble man, down to earth, self-effacing guy. He was there with his wife and his daughter. We were under strict instructions. Nobody was ever allowed to sit up on the pumpkin coach. Uh, it was a longer story about my interaction with him, but it ended with him wanting to know if his daughter was allowed to sit up there and take a picture. There is somewhere now in his house a picture of his daughter up on the pumpkin coach with me because I was not going to say no to him. And I'll tell you, I've loved the sport. I love this man here for reasons he doesn't even know. His nickname is The Real Deal. He's a small town kid from Alabama, the youngest of nine children. I happen to have nine children. My youngest, actually, little Dan the man, uh, loves boxing. He's seven years old, about the same time that you were when you first were introduced to this sport. Whether he'll ever even be a boxer or whether he'll be a great boxer, who knows. But the bottom line is, the thing I appreciate about you is you're a man who never forgot where you came from. You remember your mama, you remember your roots, you remember your humble upbringing. In the, in the time that I first realized, this is why I'm so grateful that you have chosen this city. I'm grateful that I happen to be the governor at this time. I'm grateful for the fact that we've got great people, starting with our cabinet secretary, David Dickerson, who oversees the public protection cabinet under which all of this falls. Because one of the things I said when I met with Joe before I was ever the governor, and he was telling me about the involvement that the two of you had down at this gym, and I saw how this has had a positive impact on so many young lives. And I said, man, I'd love to bring professional level boxing back to the city. And there were at the time so many different rules and regulations that precluded it from happening. We had these ridiculous cut rules and things that precluded a live event like this from taking place. Sometime after that, I ended up becoming governor. I said, well, heck, now I can do something about that. And so I don't wear this to be cute. I mean, this is, we're cutting red tape. And one of the first things we did was cut that rule out that precluded something like this from taking place. We were talking a little bit earlier. It's not so much what we're doing to make it possible for boxing to be here. It's what we can stop doing that prevents boxing from being successful here. And that's what we've been focused on. And I'm just grateful for the opportunity, but I want to bring this back to why I'm especially grateful for you and for the fact that you've chosen this city. So about 15 years ago, it was about the time you were just perhaps having finished your last stint as, w, I think WBA was your last title, wasn't it? Your last, and so it was early oh something. And so you were either just still the, the reigning champ or had just recently been the heavyweight champ of the world. I was in Atlanta. There was some kind of major weather event or something that had caused everybody to get jammed up. 
And for those of you who've flown through Atlanta, in the center of the terminals are these service counters at which everybody just kind of waits like sheep for hours to try to find a way wherever they're trying to go. And it was right about that time I was there and I was in that queue and I looked ahead of me in queue and there was Evander Holyfield. Ev Evander Holyfield was a guy who was either then the champ or had just been champ. Everyone knew him as the world champ. Four-time heavyweight champ of the world, was waiting in line like everybody else. Wasn't asking for special favors, wasn't huffing and puffing, was gracious and, and kind to everybody who approached you, and you just waited in line for a long time. The only time I'd met him prior to this was when I crossed paths with you at one point in the queue when you were going this way and I went that way and I said hello to you and I really felt bad bugging you because everybody else was bugging you. But I, I realized then that the real deal was more than speaking to your ability as a boxer. The real deal is who this man is as a man, his integrity, your, your values, who you are as a person, the way your mama raised you. You've not forgotten it. You are the real deal. And it's an honor, it's a privilege for us in Kentucky to be able to bring this event with your help to live television on CBS in June. Thank you for choosing Kentucky. I appreciate you. Thank you, Governor Bevin. Okay, so now we're going to open it up for uh, questions. Anyone who spoke on the podium is available to answer questions. And also, just to let you know, they will be available after the press conference for one-on-one -on -one interviews. So does anyone have any questions for any of our speakers today? Um, would that be South? Come on up. Okay, uh, this ra happened rather quickly when we made our decision, like I said, less than 48 hours and everybody has come together and it's tremendous the way this is really turning out. The show is going to be June 24th, okay, the details will be coming out next week with the fight card. We wanted to lock up things here in Louisville and know that we had a solid team, which we have a better team than we even anticipated or hoped for. Now we're going forward and signing contracts with fighters. You will have a title fight on the main event. There will be a minimum of three fights on the CBS Sports portion. And we're also going to put some local, because we want to give back, because it all starts. A lot of other sports have farm teams. Boxing really doesn't have that, that continuity between the amateurs and the pros, but we intend to bring that through the people here in Louisville. So you will also have amateurs on the show. We're going to open with a couple of amateur bouts earlier, and then we'll have a few more pro shows, four or five pro shows on the undercard, and then we go live TV, CBS Sports, at 10 p.m. Um, and next week we'll be releasing the fight card to you. And like I said, there will be one local kid that was signing today at 3 o'clock at uh, TKO Gym. Mr. Dixon, please stand up and take a bow because you're the man behind all this, bringing these kids and giving them hope and giving them a chance. This is the man that makes it happen, okay? He's helping keep the youth off the streets, giving them opportunity. And we don't expect them all to become world champions, although I'd love to see that because I'll be promoting them. But he, <laughs> He, he, he gives them an, another, another path to go down in life away from the streets. And what they teach them in the gym, other than boxing, is preparing them for life and to be successful. They have uh, your first college, uh, one student going into college now. So, so it's really happening. It's, it's really taking place. And uh, like I said, the fight card, which is another, another release, because this is, this is monumental in itself. What we got together here for today's announcement. Next week, we'll be putting the fight card out there. Any other questions? I said it all in one breath. Okay. Thank you all, and thank you. I love it here in Louisville. I hope to be back. Thank you all. Talk about the champion. What kind of what title it's going to be? Is it going to be? It'll be a sanctioned title fight. One of the major organizations. It will be a sanctioned title fight with one of the major organizations. And yeah, well, BC is one of our choices. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully not. We get the support and the fans come out and the town rallies behind this. I'm making the commitment and the promise and I speak for Evander and myself. We'll be back here on a regular basis, bringing big time boxing back to Louisville, where it belongs.
So are there any more questions for any of our speakers? All right, we're going to conclude the press conference. And if you want to go in the back and conduct one-on-one -on -one interviews, feel free to do so. Thank you again for coming. And we're looking forward to this great event in June. Thank you.